Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. And today you find Ross, Widget Gizmo and me in the little tiny village of Wick Risington. Now we're dodging the typical English April showers and our two dogs are much too sensible to take that risk and are sitting in the car <laughs> minding our own business. But we're having a really interesting time. This is an unusual little village. It started out as a farm, nothing more than that. It's one of the reasons it's called Wick. And it sits underneath the hills, but not on a spring or on a river, which is very unusual for Cotswold villages. It's pretty, it's spread out. We're gonna show you around. Come with me. A large farm with a small number of tenants and servile labor with its barns, outbuildings and primitive housing may have been the original iteration of what is now the village of Wick Risington. But despite that, it was thought worthy of its own parish church by the 12th century. The church is at the top of the village and we will visit it shortly. But meanwhile, the wonderful wide village green, flanked by two lines of lovely old houses deserves our attention. The single road cuts through the middle of the village and runs from the Foss Way to the Barrington Road. It's so quiet that Ross and I were able to walk down the middle of the road all the way through the village. This was lucky actually because there has been so much rain during the winter of 2023 and 4 that the green was extremely wet. The beautiful and increasingly rare village pond right in the centre of the village is clearly thriving, well maintained and no doubt at the relevant moments full of ducks. Most of the houses in the village date from the 17th and 18th centuries with a few additions from the 19th century. All the signs of classical Cotswold buildings are here. Most, if not all, the houses are roofed in either Cotswold stone tiles or occasionally in Welsh slate and are built of what is called rubble Cotswold stone. This slightly derogatory sounding description simply means uncut stone, differentiating it from the ashlar or cut stone from which the grand houses in the region tend to be built. Of course, it's all a matter of cost. As I mentioned earlier, the village has neither spring nor river in its close vicinity. So in the 19th century, a few houses had water piped from the springs above the village. And eventually, in the early 20th century, water was piped to a fountain tap on the green. But it wasn't until 1954 that Maine's water was finally provided. Truly, the Romans, all those hundreds of years ago, could have taught us much about providing water sources for the population. High up on the hill above the village is a large house built at the time of the enclosures in the early 18th century. The house, called Wick Hill House, has spectacular views over the valley to Borton on the water and is, when we visited it in early 24, in a state of considerable disrepair. There are, however, signs, albeit slightly half-hearted signs, of building activity. And there's a website that suggests the house is to be converted into a very upmarket hotel. This is undoubtedly something to keep an eye on. It may take a while, but could well be worth waiting for. And now to the church. As I have already mentioned, the first church built here was in the 12th century. The records show that it wasn't consecrated until 1269, when the Bishop of Worcester did the honours, dedicating it to St. Lawrence. Now, St. Lawrence was a Roman deacon 
under Pope Sixtus II. And four days after this Pope was put to death, Lawrence and four other clerics suffered martyrdom, probably during the persecution of the Emperor Valerian. I have a soft spot for Lawrence, because the date of his feast day, no less, is my birthday, the 10th of August. The church is built of the aforementioned rubble with ashlar trimmings and the extraordinary thickness of the tower walls, they're nearly nine foot thick at the base, indicates an early church. It will certainly have started life as a single aisle with tower and chancel pretty much as they are now. In 1822, north and south transepts were added, amongst other minor alterations. And then, in 1879, J.E.C. Cutts removed the transepts, restored the nave, raising its roof to the original steep pitch, helpfully marked on the east wall of the tower, and built the north aisle, providing a new north doorway. The east wall, with its stunning windows, gives a remarkable cathedral-like feel to this little church, into which the lovely detailed wooden reredos dedicated to a local First World War winner of the Victoria Cross, fits wonderfully. The classic Norman tub-shaped font is a survivor. It was discovered having been buried in the churchyard for many decades and was restored to its rightful place. And following on the trend of archaeological discovery, the twelve beautifully carved circular plaques on the chancel walls were discovered in 1890 at Wick Hill and depict scenes from the life of Christ. The altar table stands on a stone slab that was once the top of a medieval altar and was subsequently used as memorial floor slab. The tower has a four-bell peal, and amazingly, the organ has upon it a plaque recording that Gustav Holst, who died in 1934, played on it when he was parish organist here from 1892 to 93. We've really enjoyed this little village and are increasingly excited to visit the other Risington villages just down the road. I hope you've enjoyed our little spell around Wick Risington. We've started with the smallest of the Risington villages and I'm glad we did. It's really very pretty here and peaceful. It's for visiting if you're just on your own or with your family, but not for tour groups. It's a sleepy place, but it's very, very pretty and typical Cotswolds. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Press the little bell button beside the subscribe tab so that we can let you know whenever we post something and we will see you again in the very very near future somewhere else in the Cotswolds. Mm -hmm.